Hi, today I'm going to be talking about Hook Court in Dorset. Um, this was a time team excavation filmed back in March 2006 as part of series 14 and it was episode three. And this is a really nice one because the local school invite time team along to have a look at their building, uh, dig up their school grounds and investigate a moat that they have in their school grounds as well. So there's lots going on and you've got a fantastic team there of various specialists and experts. So, for instance, Jonathan is looking at the actual fabric of the building, looking to date the architectural elements um, with, of the standing building and to try and figure out where other buildings uh, may have been on site. You've got John Gator doing the geophysics and trying to pick up where the walls are underground in the school grounds. And then Phil and the excavation team putting the trenches in over the top of that geophysics to ascertain um, the date of the walls and see if they can work out what buildings um, they were once part of. You've also got Stuart and um, Henry who are investigating the moat and Sam looking at the documentary evidence as well. And there's a fair amount of documentary evidence too, which is fantastic. I think Lincoln, who was the fine specialist um, and pottery expert, must have had an absolute field day um, because there were an enormous amount of finds um, that come up on that site. And um, so I'm just going to name a few that it's probably worth looking out for um, as the throughout the programme. Uh, the first one is the pottery. Uh, now, the earliest uh, pottery that they get on the site, uh, small quantities of it is medieval. And some of that dates back from the 11th to the 12th century. So you're looking at a thousand years of history there being on earth. Really fascinating. But the majority of the pottery dates to around the time of the Civil War in the 17th century. This is a particularly unusual assemblage because normally when you look at um, an assemblage of pottery, you'll get sort of different fragments of, say, cups and jars and cooking pots and plates, uh, a whole variety of uh, pottery that had different uses. Now, this is really unusual because of the 146 rims that were discovered, 131 of them um, are actually one type of pottery, uh, which is um, a settling pan or a cream pan, um, which is, is a type of dish that was used in dairying. Uh, it's, a, it's a large shallow dish um, with a pouring spout, flat bottomed, and you would put milk into it to let it cool down and to separate. Um, and then you can kind of skin the cream off. So that suggests really there's a lot of dairy and activity going on in that area. And I do wonder, because at one point Phil thinks uh, that uh, the building might actually be part of a big barn or might be a big barn, whether actually it was a dairy or not. Who knows? Anyway, um, other things to look out for. Uh, there's a lovely bell, sometimes referred to as rumbler bells, um, dating to the 15, uh, 1600s. Lovely copper alloy and spherical with a sunburst pattern on the lower hemisphere. There's also a bit, unfortunately, it's really worn, but there's a bit where you would have had the founder's mark or the, the maker's mark. They would have put their uh, initials cast into it. Um, unfortunately, that's really worn, so we can't see that anymore, but a lovely artefact anyway. Uh, the floor tile is fantastic. In fact, actually, they found, I think, about seven floor tiles. This one was the only decorated one. And in the report, they were actually able to draw parallels. There was one very similar one found at Milton Abbey, which is nearby in Dorset. Having said that they didn't find many tablewares, there's one exception, and this is a lovely piece of Venetian-style glass that Paul finds um, that dates between the 16th and 17th century, and that's actually part of a goblet. So that, that's a really nice find to look out for. You've also got a really interesting assemblage of ridge tiles as well. Now, these are the, the, the tiles that go right on the top of the roof, um, and it's a style known as coxcomb. Uh, so that's cocks or roosters that would have had the, the comb. It's named after that because of the pattern uh, that you get. These would have also been glazed. So these are fairly high status ridge tiles. You don't get these on every building. Dating, uh, it, the report suggests that they're actually post-medieval, so they, um, again, probably Civil War date, kind of around that time, quite possibly, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and this is interesting because of 
the amount of uh, ridge tiles that were discovered, there were 301 ridge tiles. Uh, 285 ridge tiles are of this glazed type. So um, really interesting there. So it's really bizarre to see all these types of ridge tiles and then all that type of pottery. So it's really quite an interesting bias within the assemblage here, um, is the archaeological speak that you'll hear fine specialists <laughs> talking about. Um, I think that's um, hopefully enough on finds to whet your appetite. Uh, why watch this episode? Well, I think it's a lovely example of the team coming together to answer a question um, from their different kind of approaches, different specialisms. Uh, I think actually that uh, it's worth watching Stuart and Sam. Uh, so you've got the documentary evidence and the landscape uh, aspect of it. Uh, that's really interesting. They come up with a really interesting theory. So do look out for that. Uh, if you've ever wondered what a pipe notch is, listen out for Paul's explanation of that. And I think um, I'm going to leave a little bit of a cliffhanger here. Um, I don't want to give it away too much, um, but um, Mick Aston actually refers, this, they have a find that Mick Aston refers to as um, it's the best find we've had in years, that is. So I'm not going to give it away. I'm going to let you enjoy the episode and discover it for yourself. can't do any of this work without you so please subscribe back us on patreon and make sure that time team comes back again